AI stocks may be in a dot-com style bubble, Stellantis laying off workers, and car insurance increases. Hi, it's Edward, back with another video. Please take a moment to click the thumbs up button below and consider subscribing to the channel. Please also share this video with your friends. Thank you for your support. Today, I read several financial news articles. I've included links to the articles in the description below. I encourage you to read the articles to support the authors and news sources. As a private American citizen, I'd like to report and share my transformative thoughts through commentary regarding small sections of these articles that are of public interest. Today, I read an article on Yahoo Finance put out by Business Insider and written by Theron Muhammad, titled, Elite Investor Jeffrey Gundelach Compares the AI Boom in Stocks to the Dot-Com Bubble in Warns of Economic Pain. According to the author, Jeffrey Gundelach has warned the AI-crazed stock market reminds him of the dot-com bubble and predicted a painful mix of stubborn inflation and economic decline lies ahead. He said, this feels a lot like 1999. He said the NASDAQ index surged 80% in the fourth quarter of 1999, but 12 months later, it was down 85% from its peak. Well, my friends, here are my thoughts. First, consider who is saying this. Jeffrey Gundelach is a bond guy. Let me ask you a question. Could his statements have motives beyond just sharing his thoughts regarding what is happening in the stock market? I'll let you answer that question. I have no doubt artificial intelligence will be a game changer in the world. AI will replace jobs, but the question is how many? Over time, AI will likely allow for advances in many different industries. I still think AI has a ways to go before it becomes human-like. For example, I've yet to receive a robocall from a system where it seemed like I was actually having a conversation with a real human. I haven't yet encountered an AI system where it even felt like I was having a conversation with the Cyberdyne Systems Model 101 Terminator. In that movie, Arnold's character was pretty robotic, using words like affirmative. All of the robocalls that I get are not very advanced. I realize systems like ChatGPT4 can do amazing things, but I still think this tech has a ways to go. I really think there is a lot of hype surrounding AI. Do I think the NASDAQ is going to crash 85% from its peak? No, I personally don't think so. Could it happen? Sure, anything could happen. But we have circuit breakers now that trigger limit down. We have a Fed that has shown Wall Street that they are ready to come to the rescue whenever there is any indication of a possible panic. And this is an election year. Politicians will likely say and do whatever they need to to keep the stock market propped up. I do see some parallels between today and the 1990s because of the hype. Back then, a lot of stocks skyrocketed just on hype, and that is similar to today. I realize companies like NVIDIA manufacture components that are in demand. Perhaps that demand will continue, but Will it continue and then rise to the extent that investors are hoping? Time will certainly tell. Imagine if we did see the NASDAQ crash 85% from its peak. Imagine how that would decimate over leveraged investors and the retirement accounts of many everyday Americans. There would be a lot of pain to be felt. Let's hope that does not come to fruition. I want the best for everyone and I don't want to live through a repeat of the dot-com bubble popping. I had some friends and acquaintances whose personal finances were completely destroyed after the air came out of the dot-com bubble. Getting back to the article, Jeffrey Gundelach described the current market as grabby and momentum-driven and said he would only invest in an equal-weighted index as he's not interested in owning seven stocks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are certainly a lot of people who are very interested in owning seven stocks. Every time I turn on the television or open different news websites, I continue hearing about the Magnificent Seven. Back in the late 1990s, Yahoo had an IPO that closed at $33 per share, which was up 270% from the IPO price. On January 3rd, 2000, Yahoo closed at an all-time high of $475 per share, which was the pre-split price. 
This made them the most valuable company in the world at that time. After the dot-com crash, Yahoo closed at an all-time low of $8.11 per share. That was on September 26, 2001. This just goes to show you how a high-flying tech stock can be dethroned. Could the same happen to one or more of the Magnificent Seven or other tech stocks today? Sure, it could happen. Will it happen? Only time will tell. Understand, I'm not predicting that this will happen anytime soon. If there is one thing I learned after living through the dot-com mania in the 1990s, it's that stocks can continue to rise for a long time based on optimism and greed. Greed is a very strong emotion. Back then, I watched stocks continue to climb day after day. I really thought a decline was just around the corner. I was wrong. Many stocks continued to climb month after month. It was crazy to see some stocks rise to the levels that they did. The same could certainly happen today. I personally worry about those who are speculating with margin. Some could get wiped out if a day of reckoning eventually comes. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. While stocks continue to defy logic, some hardworking Americans are going to be laid off. I read an article today on foxbusiness.com written by Breck Dumas titled, Dodge parent Stellantis laying off hundreds of U.S. workers. Stellantis, the parent company of several auto brands, including Dodge, Jeep, and Chrysler, confirmed on Friday that it will be laying off hundreds more U.S. workers as it continues to trim its workforce amid its transition to electric vehicle production. The author went on to say, the company has held multiple rounds of layoffs over the past year and offered voluntary buyouts to more than half of its 12,700 salaried employees in the U.S. All of this in a move to cut costs as it moves its focus to EVs and takes on increased costs from its new contract with the United Auto Workers Union. Here are my thoughts. First, my heart goes out to the people who have been laid off and to those who will be getting laid off in the future. I hope they have a well-funded emergency account so they can cover all of their expenses until they find new employment. I also hope they have a skill set that is still in demand in our labor market. Fortunately, unemployment is still low and a lot of companies are having a hard time hiring. Some people may have to relocate for a new job though, which isn't always fun. I really worry that some automakers are putting too many eggs in one basket when it comes to transitioning to electric vehicles. I know some people love their electric vehicles and never want to go back to an internal combustion engine vehicle. However, there are a lot of Americans who want nothing to do with electric vehicles. Some electric vehicles are sitting on dealer lots right now and these dealers are having a hard time getting them sold, even with price reductions. I worry about what could happen to some auto manufacturers in the future if they start cranking out more of these electric vehicles and they can't get them sold. What kind of layoffs could we be seeing then? If you work for an automaker that is heavily focused on manufacturing electric vehicles, or if you work at a dealership that has a lot of electric vehicles sitting on the lot, I'd really love to hear your perspective on this in the comment section below. On the topic of automobiles, I read an interesting article on CNBC.com written by Sean Baldwin titled, Why Auto Insurance Rates Are Skyrocketing in the U.S. The author of this article referenced bank rate and said car insurance is getting more expensive. The average annual premium for full coverage auto insurance in the U.S. rose to $2,543 in 2024, which is up 26% from the previous year. Well, my friends, I hate to hear about this, but unfortunately, it is reality. Even the car insurance for my 20-year-old 2004 Toyota Camry went up in the past year. My car is one year older. My driving record is the same. My credit score is basically the same, yet my insurance got more expensive. Fortunately, the insurance is still extremely cheap, so I barely feel the difference. The same can't be said for some Americans who are stretched financially already. Some went out and bought their dream car or truck in recent years while their student loans were on pause, interest rates were low for their other debts, and they were flush with cash from stimulus money. Some of these new expensive vehicles have expensive insurance. Some of these people are now struggling to make all of their debt payments, and to top it off, they have to worry about more expensive car insurance. Now you might ask, why is car insurance getting more expensive? 
Well, the author of this article referenced a report from the American Property Casualty Insurance Association, which revealed factors such as longer repair times and more expensive rental car costs, resulting in rising prices. I'm sure there is some truth to this. I have to wonder, though, how much of this is just greedflation like at the grocery store? Now, the author did indicate cars are becoming more costly to fix. This is something I believe completely. I talked with the manager of a body shop who was telling me why modern cars are so expensive to repair. He cited numerous examples, such as all of the cameras and sensors that are on the front and back of these vehicles. I have to wonder if Chamillionaire was ahead of his time when he wrote the song Ridin'. He said, they see me rolling, they hating, patrolling, trying to catch me riding dirty, trying to catch me riding dirty, trying to catch me riding dirty. Well, my friends, there may be a lot more people riding dirty without insurance in the near future. Some people won't be able to afford to pay for it anymore. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Please keep in mind that everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only, and nothing in this video is financial advice or advice of any kind. If you need advice, seek advice from a qualified professional in good standing who puts your interests first and foremost. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Please also consider sharing this video with your friends. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. Check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.